I came to the event uh, about seven years ago and maybe maybe a bit longer ago with Colin Ross and I. We weren't really evolved uh, officially back then, uh, but I think I stood uh, at Deep Well, which is about you know 90k's uh, into the start of the race, and uh, the first 10 bikes went through, and there wasn't one single KTM uh, in the top 10, and uh, that kind of motivated me, I guess. And uh, ever since that day, I, I still remember the pain of standing there and not seeing a single KTM come through. So. It's, it's, it's driven, driven me pretty hard. I'm a pretty competitive person. And, um, you know, we were determined to come back and, and try and win the race. But, you know, we had a couple of heartbreaks before that, that happened. And uh, it's the sort of race that um, you know, even if you do all the hard work and, and you have everything in place, uh, it's not like that, you know, you deserve to win it. It's, it's a race that, um, you need a lot of a lot of things to go right for you to win. It's not necessarily about luck, but it's uh, it's a tough one to win, and it's it's an annual event, so it's like like the Melbourne Cup. Um, you know, if it doesn't go right, you've got to agonise over it for a, another 12 months before you can come back and try and get it right. Like all the others, you know, it's something I, I really look forward to, and um, I think I've been for the last six years straight. Um, and it's just a really unique event, you know. It's like nothing else that we get to do. Uh, it's one time a year you get to sleep in the you know, swag under the stars, and, and it's just a you know, very, very uh, unique atmosphere. And in terms of the event itself, it's you know, it's extreme, you know. It's 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 right out there. The speeds, the conditions, the distance of the race. So it's it's radical and there's nothing else like it in the world. Just say, that's the track and then this is where that first fuel stop and we come in. You'd have your first fuel bike here and you feel from the left hand side of the bike and the other health on the right hand side. You have, so that bike would be there with no wheels on it, ready, the wheels ready in case something happened. And if you did have an issue with a tyre, you'd come in here, lift your bike, and then just pull that from there, put the bike on there, and then you're close to the other bike if you need parts off of that bike. It's not, it's not far to go to get the parts. So stop car number one, that's yeah. exactly where it was last year, is that yeah. the next to that tree. And and it's it actually, it's bunted off with this bunny yep. That's the bunny that you'll see there. And that's just that, that tree before the corner. Yeah, it's all starting to kick off at uh, Friday night. It's, yeah, this is where it all starts now. So we're, yeah, all prepped been good and looking forward to it. As soon as I fly into this place or drive into it, the, the Fink event is just, I don't know, something about it may click and, and I have a lot of fun and I just love blasting through the desert as fast as I can. And, and it's, a, it's a challenge, even though you're racing with other people, it, it's more of a challenge against myself, this place, to see how fast I can go. And, and definitely since Toby's come here I've had to step up to a new level and, and it's going to be the same from now on. There's a little bit extra pressure on me this year but um, yeah you can't really think about that too much it's it's just basically the same as any other time with ha having Grabo in the race or not in the race so we'll uh, yeah treat it the same and hopefully it all goes well and um, can bring home a win for the KDM team. Yeah well actually I guess mine's a bit of a strange story uh, was a privateer up until about six weeks ago uh, unfortunately, you know, been had his accident, um, so you know, left the bike available, um, and then you know, Chris Hollis has decided to pull out of the event as well. 
Uh, we've had then two bikes available sitting there with no rider, so I uh, got the call up uh, to come in as a replacement rider and fill in for you know, Chris that wanted to focus on the Aussie off-roads and Ben that was injured, so absolutely jumped at the opportunity to, to ride the bike. You can only do the best you can do and you know we've done a fair bit of uh, testing and pre-running so you know if, if we ride a hundred percent um you know where we finish we'll like we'll definitely we, we'd love to win again but you know just we'll just you know the race is so un unpredictable that you don't know what's going to happen out there it's definitely the fastest toughest desert race in australia and um there's no doubt the track is insanely rough now i mean the whoops are higher than a meter at some spots deep close together there's airstrips before them so you're coming in at high speeds and the mixture you know with the corners and the deep sand and the hard the rock the, the step up cases i mean it's just got such a, a wide mix of track um, you sort of you need to be uh, pretty much good at everything and have a bike set up to do everything which is really hard you know you can't uh, set the bike up for the nice you know for the choppy stuff and then also have it handling good in the whoops so it's a lot of give and take you gotta have a good run eh? you really have to get going from the start I mean the likes of Toby and um, Ben you know they've sort of turned Fink from a desert race into a bit of a motocross you know they get going from the minute that they they leave town so we sort of worked on maybe you know a bit of that instead of trying to build up into getting a rhythm going and sort of worked on trying to get a rhythm going from the start so it's all about just being smart keeping your machine going keeping your body you know your body up to speed and sort of just making sure that you get down there consistently and that you sort of you know you're running a running a pace similar to what the other guys are that's yeah the start of the whole weekend and if you can get a good prologue time and pretty well be on that first row it, it makes a big difference uh, but like being out first, you, it's, yeah, you don't know really where you are. Um, like guys could be pretty well still right behind you and you don't know, but it just, yeah, to get that dust free run, it always helps. Hey, how important is the prologue? Yeah, it's very important because it's so dry this year. It hasn't been this dry since probably 2007. But, so if you start a bit further back, what does that mean? You're in the dust or? Yeah, it's just dust, like you're going to get right and sort of get tired. Where you want to be, it's just a matter of trying to get on. What do you think, Grabo, when you see him? 
Day one's gone pretty well. Uh, got a good, like, got a good start, and uh, got out front pretty well straight up, and yeah, got a good dust-free run. So it was just uh, stayed on two wheels. Just when I got to the uh, like the harder sections in the warps, just made sure I got through, and yeah, it all it's all turned out pretty well. But after those cars, like the buggies and the trophy trucks have been through, it, it changed the track a lot, and it's just. Yeah, you've got to try and pick your way through and you're the first one on it and trying to find the lines where it's smoother and easier to get through. It uh, makes it pretty hard, but yeah, like with, with the vision, like being dusty, the guys behind would have would have probably may, ha, maybe had it a little bit harder. So I've done a, I've done a lot of pre-running down here this year and it's, yeah, to get into the actual race now, I've always found it like a lot easier to get to Fink than on the way home. Today it just yeah it just changed the track so much like there's, there's like no moisture in in the sand and I find where the cars maybe pack it down a little bit and, and make it a bit easier for us. This year it's just real dry and they've just basically it's like bombs are going off through there and everything's just exploded and it uh, yeah made it pretty hard in some sections. It's just like real square edge stuff but. Yeah, that's why when I got into those sections and seen all that, I was like, yeah, you, you can't quite pick it too well. Uh, so yeah, I just made sure I got through and uh, stay, stayed on my two wheels. And yeah, when I knew a section was smooth coming up, I yeah get back on the gas and go again and just try and yeah edge away a little bit. <laughs> Off, How are we going? So happy you're going great, mate. Pulling Just keep lead. your head, keep focused on the on the track. That's all you got to do. Pulling lead, pulling lead. All right, uh, tap on. Tap on. Yep. Keep it up. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I definitely know I have some in reserve. Like to, I could have got here a little bit quicker, but. I'm here in one piece and um, sitting at the front at the moment. So as long as all the run goes, run home goes well, we uh, yeah should be sitting not too bad, I think. I was thinking I was just, I'd pretty much half given up. I was just, uh, yeah, I was trying to trying to go fast through the whoops, and the back end was just stepping out of me everywhere. And I was like, well, you know, it's not worth risking it, not worth you know landing on my head. So I sort of just shut it down and started cruising there for a while and seeing a bit of dust and uh, yeah, sort of rekindles the spirit and turn the throttle and put it on the edge again. The first 50, 60 k's, the arms are pumping up and yeah, you know, the track's all chopped up and stuff and yeah, I think you, you recover a lot quicker, you get on the road section, get a bit of a breather and then get into the big warps and same thing, you sort of know where you can uh, get to to have a rest and you just push, you tend to push through and keep, keep moving forward. Yeah. It's awesome seeing people out there having a good time camping and cheering us all on, I think it's uh, it's the best, probably the best part about the race for sure. You know, it gets you, gets you going and makes you laugh some of the signs. And yeah, I think when I was getting close to Fink, I seen uh, a sign I had last lap. It just cracked me up. It was like, good, cool. Yeah, today went pretty well, actually. Uh, I had a little bit of drama off the start. Got beaten uh, by Jared Julie off the start. So I copped a fair bit of dust for the first sort of 30, 40 k's. Uh, it cleared out. And I was lucky enough to sort of leapfrogging frog him at the fuel stop. The, the, our team was just fantastic at the fuel stop, so passed him there. Uh, they put up, put up with Brad, um, teammate, so um, they had to follow him from the fuel stop through to the, to the 110k mark. 
um, that sort of when you start the sanding looks. So things are cleared out a little bit, the dust is gone, so I was able to make a move on in then. And then from there I had a fairly clean sail and down to the last sort of 180 k's I sort of caught up to someone else and it's happened to be the dust again, but you know, all in all it was a pretty good day. Oh, my KM450 went great, yeah. uh, it came down awesome, you know, didn't miss a beat all day, so uh, I think definitely the best run I've had down and I'd like to thank the team for you know, putting me on board and giving me the opportunity to, to ride the bike. Yeah, I got into a bit of a battle with um, AJ early up and then he ended up getting in front of me and dusting me a bit, so I had to back off a bit there. And uh, yeah, not long after that, I think about around um, 15, 20 k, uh, my arm just, my right arm just pumped up really bad, like, and I thought, oh yeah, that'll go away, but it was only one arm and <clears throat> it just got down to about the 50 and it wasn't going away, it was getting worse and yeah, I got to like the first fuel stop and by that time, um, the next two behind me, Jared and Fishy, they'd, they'd sort of caught up and I got out of there and got going again and sort of, <clears throat> I, I think I dusted them a fair bit after that and I got to about halfway before, before I started coming good with my arm and um, yeah, coming to the second field stop and um, with Kari and uh, we were pretty pretty close there through the whoops and um, come out of there and then from there on I was good, I felt good from, from 160 to the finish. Pretty easy really for for one of these races, normally we get quite a bit of crash damage. This time the boys will kick it on two wheels, so it makes our life a lot easier. This event, you have to know the track. You have to have track knowledge and a lot of experience. Uh, it, it'll be nice just to, to actually get going and, and give it absolutely everything I've got, but then again, you, you run the risk of yeah having either bike troubles or yeah ending up crashing. So. We'll just take it as it comes. We'll uh, try and work out how I'm sitting at the fuel stop, like if anyone's gaining or if I'm actually pulling away. If if I'm pulling away, I'll just I'll just keep it out of what, at what I'm doing and just make sure that we yeah we get there. And if uh, they they start catching, well, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I've got yeah some more in reserve and we should be should be good to go. And yeah, try and pull that back out. It's definitely not the same having like not having Grabo here. He's actually here. But not having in the race, it, it's definitely different. And but he, he's been a great help. He's always he's, he's always been there to give little pointers where he can. And it, it's yeah, like he can't really learn much from anyone better at the moment. That Grabo is definitely the king out here. And still at this stage, yeah, if I, yeah it's a long way. But if yeah, I can get the win tomorrow, it's definitely not going to be really a win for me. Uh, it, yeah, it'd be nice just to try and settle that score a little bit with Grabo, but he's he's definitely yeah, he's definitely the fastest man out here for sure. And it's yeah, it'll be good. We'll just um, yeah, hopefully yeah, we'll have to wait another 12 months and see how we go there. Yeah, we got here in one piece, and we'll just uh, take tomorrow as it comes. And yeah, if I have to, we'll we'll flap off the back of it and go for it.
I knew I had a pretty good, pretty good lead, uh, a, a comfortable lead. It wasn't um, some small th thing could have went wrong and it would have been back close. But uh, yeah, I just, I just made sure I, I got down here safe or got back here safe and uh, preserved the bike again. And yeah, the, the bike worked faultlessly. I, I can't, yeah, I can't pick one thing that went ever went wrong anywhere along the way. So it was a good clean run back, and we, uh, yeah, just just got into a good rhythm and a good smooth, comfortable pace and uh, yeah, everything felt really good and yeah, it was, yeah, loving the trip back. Everyone, everyone just sees what I do and it's, um, it's unfortunate because there's so many people that are on, on board with us that actually help out. There's at least like 20 guys that, that are part of KDM that, that come along and help out and then there's, there's also, there's so many people at our fuel stops that are just people that, that don't get recognised. I, I, I can't rattle off names. There's so many people that help out, and we appreciate that so much. It just that it, it, it lets our job be a lot easier, and it takes a bit of stress off us, and it, yeah, and, and it lets me go out there and have fun and, and, and do what I love doing. So yeah, it, it's hard to try and think of everybody out there, but it's yeah, yeah, the boys do a great job, and they uh, they keep us going, and basically keep our wheels turning for us and it's, yeah, I, I can't thank those guys enough. Yeah, we've had a really good run home, uh, you know, finished up fourth, you know, it would have been nice, you know, it was very close to getting on the podium there and you know, that was the ultimate goal coming here was to get on the podium, you know, unfortunately just missed out and fourth is where I finished, so yeah, happy with that. Probably there could be more importance into that prologue, uh, yeah, started off uh, ninth uh, on day one and had a fairly dusty trip down to start with and you know, looking back I lost minutes going down that uh, on that first day but you know, I'm sure everyone's got the same story and you know, fourth is where we're at. Yeah I was back in 12th after the correct time and uh, not really happy with that position and uh, really wanted to get in the top 10 that was my goal for today and uh, to finish in the top 10 and uh, I had a really good run um, out of Fink and uh, ended up catching the, f the two guys in front of me before our first field stop and um, you know that that gave me a bit of motivation to keep charging and then got out of there had a clear run from there I uh, got past the other, uh, another guy ended up getting past someone else but I didn't even know like they'd broken down or whatever so made it uh, yeah come in in eighth but had a, had a pretty clear run all the way home you know, Toby and, you know, Fish, you know, he outdone himself this year. He, he, uh, he, um, he really went well, so, but, to you know, Toby just, he was, my, he was a league above everybody else and it showed in the times and that and, you know, um, I think Matt um, surprised himself how good he went and, and, yeah, so we all got in the top ten. Uh, we all... We all finished, the bikes were awesome. You know, Mick Caruzzi done an awesome job on the motors, built every motor from scratch, and uh, they didn't miss a beat the whole weekend, so uh, it was an uh, awesome effort. I'm really happy, but also, you know, really relieved, I guess. It's, uh, I guess there's a lot of work that goes into this race by a lot of people, and uh, there's a big build up over a long period of time. And, uh, I guess when you're in a position where you, you know you're in contention to, to win the race, um, yeah, you, you you feel that fear of failure and uh, and all the rest of it. So um, yeah, as much as I'm, I'm I'm really happy, and I don't think I'm really gonna it's really gonna sink in until maybe later tonight. Um, but uh, you know, really really pleased for all, all the all the team and, and everybody that's contributed to the effort. It makes it all worthwhile when we can, you know, we can stand on top of the podium uh, for the fourth time in a row. Uh, it's very pleasing. Uh, the only scary thing is it gets harder every time. Yeah, look, um, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you and also, um, uh, you know, talking about our, our fourth victory in a row if it wasn't for Colin and, uh, and the support of his company, the HSC Group. Um, it's been phenomenal. Um, you know, they really get behind what we do. Uh, his company, uh, you know, I guess we, we've partnered up on quite a few racing activities and we think alike and I think it's tremendous uh, that uh, we're able to sort of uh, do this together. And, and I, I think we work well. You know, I think the, the, the two of us working together makes a very, very strong, formidable team. Um, 
And yeah, you know, we, we have similar ideas, similar cultures in our, in our own companies and uh, it's a lot of fun to come away um, and, and do this sort of stuff and, uh, and do it successfully because uh, we both like to win a lot. We both like to win and um, yeah, I mean, can't be any better than that. Yeah, it's an awesome feeling to get this, this win. It uh, definitely means a lot, but it only comes around once a year and it's um, yeah, definitely the best one we can win out of uh, all, the, all the races that we do, so it's, it's great to be on top of the box. Yeah, hopefully I can just keep coming back. It's a, yeah, what's uh, Gravo, he's around 31 and he's won four or so, so it's, and he's still definitely the best one out here for sure. He's definitely the king of the desert and um, yeah, we just seem to be at the moment just chopping and changing and taking turns with it and it's, uh, yeah, it's good. So for him being his age, it, uh, it still shows that I can still probably be competitive at, his, at that age as well and should hopefully be able to at least have another good, yeah, eight or so more Fink left in me and uh, yeah, just we'll take it as it comes and hopefully we can, uh, yeah, get some more wins and I'm keen as to get back out here and go again and hopefully have that number one board on the bike and, uh, and hopefully keep it on a KDM but I'd like to try and take that little bit of a curse off that number one plate and, and, and try and keep it on my bike but well, yeah, we'll just see how we go. It's uh, basically preparation for Fink 2013 starts tomorrow. <laughs>